Hello, this is John Canlampas from our office here in Athens, Greece. I'm extremely excited to share with you this fascinating technology. I want to add here the note that we have been working towards what you're going to be seeing today over the last 20 years. Um, and uh, nothing explains what I'm trying to tell you today better than a clinical example. This is a 27-year-old male. He is a um, candidate for uh, laser surgery. He's a minus four, minus half of 15 degrees in his right eye. This is his uh, clinical refraction. We also have the uh, dry manifest, the psychoplegic refraction, several objective measurements with auto refraction and wavefront. And the way we have been working till now is of course assessing the cornea norm normality. This is an OCT image of the uh, uh, total cornea thickness, the epithelial thickness. We're using, this is just an external picture of the right eye. We're using uh, always in our uh, standard care axial length measurements in order to confirm this is a right eye, 25, 24 actual length uh, measured along with other parameters of cornea thickness, aqueous depth uh, and lens thickness and anterior chamber depth. Then um, confirming uh, the uh, topographic measurements we're seeing here, which, which show higher astigmatic power, about one diopter with the rule instead of the half diopter the patient uh, chose. Here uh, are the uh, tomographic confirmation of this astigmatism again, uh, more than half a diopter tomographic total astigmatism on that cornea, uh, pupillometry to look at the pupillary size and adjust the ablation uh, diameter, and of course, nothing to do with the laser, but a confirmation that the fundus is normal. Now, these separate diagnostic devices, and we also have waveform measurements here. Uh, in this particular patient, the waveform was min minus 3.7, minus 0.75 at 161 degrees. So these were individual measurements that we set into a lab-like fashion. We tried to correlate between them to do a TMR, a topographic uh, modification of the refraction, a, a entity that we introduced five years ago. We taught internationally. We had the uh, privilege to be uh, the tutors for the first U.S. physicians to be um, acclimated to topo topography-guided treatments. And we've globally set with our topography guided courses uh, the standard of how to assess all these parameters. Now, granted, this is a lot of work. This takes a lot of specialization and specification and a very dedicated team that will spend a lot of time and effort pursuing the adjustment of what has been until now the gold standard, which was the clinical refraction, what the patient chose on the manifest refraction for laser vision correction. Now, this, all this work, hours of data accumulation, of assessment, empiric assessment, and final um, treatment with our TMR technique is now available with a push of a button. And this is the new uh, sitemap technology. It's a single device, which includes a wavefront analyzer, hartmann shack uh, wavefront analyzer, a very high-end sign fluke uh, tomographer and uh, interferometry to measure actual length as well as infrared camera to capture the iris architecture and uh, topographic location of all these specific uh, iris uh, registration marks and that will be used uh, later for the treatment as well as pupillometry as you can see here and the way this works is from the single device, we obtain all these measurements and now we will assess each one of these measurements on a single platform. Uh, we'll start with the wavefront. We will use the statistical analysis of how the device compares the individual wavefront maps we took with the uh, site map device. We'll exclude the outliers and um, our positive feedback for that is the improvement of the standard deviation of these measurements. Uh, then we'll skip, uh, once we have a uh, very consistent way from maps, we'll skip to the tomography assessment, the sign flu tomography. This is a compliment to our team here in Athens. Uh, the deviation between these four tomography uh, measurements is zero. So we have basically uh, measurements that are identical and we have described in the past uh, several techniques on how to achieve that goal uh, with uh, accurate and careful uh, measurements. 
Um, so we'll just move on here. If there was some diversity in the measurements, we would do the same thing, exclude the outliers in order to improve the numbers. And then we'll move ahead. We will uh, visit our actual length measurements. And again, measuring from the tip of the cornea to the macula, uh, 25, 21, very close to our uh, device that measure actual length uh, individually and representing our older technique and it also a testament of how accurate these measurements are. We are at uh, 0.400s, so 400s of a millimeter accuracy between the two interferometers. And again, here we'll select the consistency between the actual length measurements. We'll confirm that we accept uh, the minimal diversity and then we'll move on to the next step where the device now is starting to calculate the refraction that should be treated. Now in this refraction, six parameters are being taken into consideration. One we saw is the wavefront. The other one is the sine fluke imaging tomography. The third is the actual length. The fourth is the preemptive calculation of the biomechanical change that the cornea will undergo with a LASIK procedure and the amount of myopia that is going to be removed in comparison to the total thickness of the cornea and the cornea flap as well as the epithelial remodeling. We saw how carefully we evaluate, in this instance, preoperatively epithelium. Uh, so this has preemptively inserted as data into the uh, software. And the sixth, par sixth parameter is the iris registration data and the pupillary that we saw before, which will be used to deliver this suggested treatment onto the uh, exact location on the cornea guided by the possible rotation uh, from cycle rotation that the iris uh, landmarks will have from registration with the patient sitting to uh, treatment with the patient supine under the uh, EX500 eczema laser by Alcon Wavelight. Um, it is mind boggling that um, hours of uh, uh, assessment, of uh, exam capturing, of debate, of uh, looking into these numbers is now represented into a single uh, multidisciplinary uh, map that gives us all this feed feedback. You saw how it just took a few seconds for the device to calculate this. And I think that uh, this is a testament of how artificial intelligence can make uh, life much easier. Uh, I understand that uh, for many cl busy clinicians, going the old way, TMR and manual calculations may be out of uh, practical scope of their clinical practice. This becomes now a tool for everybody. And if I may add, uh, in my opinion, being always somebody who believes in safety comes first, this way also secures 100% that the specific treatment will be delivered uh, as measured on the specific eye. Because if we click back to the iris registration, in order for the device to move ahead, it will have to recognize while the patient is sitting under the laser, the exact iris landmarks, which becomes, which becomes the patient's fingerprint for the specific eye. Thus, nothing increases more the safety margin of delivering the exact numbers with a um, AI calculation on the exact eye. I think we live in times that technology is really surpassing our expectations. I personally feel very flattered that all the work that we've done in customized ablation, all the um, training uh, courses and uh, changing the awareness of the ophthalmic community in treating uh, regular and irregular corneas with topographic uh, 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 guided treatments and uh, uh, topographic specialized treatments um, and how to use uh, a mixture between the objective topographic data the rest of uh, the actual length uh, wavefront um, uh, data uh, and uh, the objective up till now, um, subjective in, in fact, clinical refraction of the patient in our uh, suggested TMR methodology is now basically done within a few seconds by a automated device. Uh, I think, I hope you find uh, this presentation interesting and I think this uh, will be something that will become everyday practice in every laser uh, throughout the world. Thank you so much for your attention.